Why are Buggy and Luffy two sides of the same coin? Why is Buggy known as a savior? How did Buggy become an emperor? What is the point of Buggy being a clown? Well, what if I told you that Buggy will go down to be remembered by the world as Sun God Nika? Luffy is the real Sun God, but the pirates will always remember it as being Buggy. Trust me, it might sound crazy and far-fetched, but there's actually a ton of evidence for this theory, and it's honestly just so goofy yet so Oda-like at the same time. Wizard of Oars here, and today we'll be discussing an ultimate Buggy theory on his destined fate for the end of One Piece. Remember to like, subscribe, and even hit that notification bell just like Luffy and Skypiea, and now let's get into it. In chapter 1018, Who's Who tells us about a rumor that he learned of in Impel Down. This rumor was about a legendary warrior who went by the name of Sun God Nika. It was said that he would be the one to free the slaves and prisoners of Impel Down. Another thing Who's Who says about Nika is that this man was known to bring laughter to people's lips as he frees them. Now, who does this sound like? Well, most would say Luffy, as of course he did eat the Nika fruit, but let me remind you that pretty much no one in the world knows about the true name behind the Gummo Gummo no Mi. So so since the legend of Nika seems to be a rumor that's passed around in the shadows of Impel Down, who do the prisoners think this man is? Well, what if they think it's Buggy? Buggy is the one that freed almost all the prisoners of Impel Down. He also fits the description of a man that makes people smile and laugh since he's literally a clown. We see the prisoners continuously calling Buggy a savior, which I mean they're technically not wrong, but it sounds a lot like something people would call Nika. The prisoners worship him and say that they'll follow him forever, they say how he basically owns them since he freed them. Buggy truly is the one that makes them happy. We see another description of Buggy being a false Nika after the men escape and learn that Bon Clay sacrificed himself. As all the men are crying over the sacrifice made by Bon Chan, Buggy tells them to stop being depressed over it since there's nothing they can do about it. He tells them to turn their frowns upside down because they should look on the bright side of things. They're all finally free from their hell so it should be time to party. Doesn't this sound a lot like something a legend like Nika would say? To party, laugh, and have fun. Even even when some things are sad. Isn't this also like what Saul told Robin? Saul tells her that you laugh when you're having fun, so even if you're having a hard time in life, just laugh and it'll make it better. This is almost the exact same thing that Buggy tells everyone on the ship. Since they're going through a hard time, they should just party and have fun. It'll seize the pain of what happened to Bon Clay. As Luffy gets mad at this, the other men on the ship may be thinking that Buggy is a man of wisdom and in fact the warrior that brings smiles and laughter. By the way, only the prisoners from the third and higher levels of Impo Down believe this. The guys that were on the lower, more secure levels like Jinbei and Croc know Buggy isn't the real legend, but actually Luffy. Yes. I believe that Jimmy and Croc started to believe Luffy was Nika after that day, but I've already made a video on this, so I won't be expanding too much on it here. If you're interested, I'll leave the link in the description. Another time we see Buggy make people smile and laugh is in Orange Town, when he legit just tells his men to laugh. In some way, these are all things that resemble the sun god Nika. Going back to Buggy and how his crew members worship him, it's also interesting to point out that even the Navy admired that not just Luffy, but both Luffy and Buggy were the masterminds behind the breakout of Impel Down. We even see some reactions say how the world government acknowledges that Buggy was more important to the breakout than the warlords. This is also where they find out that Buggy was a part of Roger's crew, friends with Shanks, and also close with Ray Lee. They then start chanting his name as if he's some sort of god, and then he inspires them even more to go to Marineford and kill Whitebeard. Notice how even Jinbei acknowledges that he has a talent for this, and then someone says that Buggy is the world's leader, not just their leader, but the worlds. I personally believe this is foreshadowing to how Buggy will somehow lead the world as they think he is the return of Sun God Nika. In this same chapter we also see Buggy say how he'll become an emperor and maybe even the pirate king. Since he already got one of these things right, I wouldn't be too surprised about the other one becoming true too. I mean, Shanks did tell Buggy that one day they'll find the One Piece for themselves. This honestly seems very possible now with them being two of the Yonko in the final road to Laugh Tale Saga. Buggy has also said that he he's gonna be the one to get his hands on all the treasure in the world. I don't think he'll get the One Piece for the whole entire ending, but actually momentarily. Luffy will obviously be the real Pirate King, but Buggy might be it for a little bit of time. Maybe he'll steal the treasure from Luffy just like how he stole his treasure in Orangetown. We see him take Luffy's hat right off his head, tear it up, and then drop 
it once he realizes that it's Shanks' old hat. Maybe this is foreshadowing Buggy taking Luffy's treasure of the One Piece for a little and then giving it back once he realizes it's not just gold and valuables. There's actually a lot of hints in Orange Town that may point to Buggy becoming the Pirate King and being known throughout the world as the return of Nika. As Luffy tells him that he's gonna become the Pirate King, Buggy says that if Luffy can become the Pirate King, then he can become a god. Maybe Buggy will become a god just like another man did in Dress Rosa. I really do think Buggy will be known as an actual god of some pirates just like Usopp and Dress Rosa since Buggy and Usopp seem to be two sides of the same coin. Both are known for their noses, both have foretold the future, both trick people into thinking they're strong, both have family or someone like family on the red haired crew, both did the most disrespectful things to the marines inside their gates of justice. Usopp or Soge King declared war on them. Buggy was considered a mastermind of the Impel Down breakout and he also exposed the world government at Marineford. The last similarity would be that both are the most memed One Piece characters but that doesn't really count for being an actual parallel in the story. I believe all these parallels may show that both Usopp and Buggy will be known and worshipped as actual gods by the end of the series. It already happened to Usopp so now we're just waiting on Buggy's turn. The next thing I want to talk about with Buggy becoming the false Nika has to do with this page from chapter 2. I believe this page foreshadowed Sun God Nika since I believe that Jolly Rogers originated from Nika or Joy Boy. I'm not going to go into too much detail but just know that in One Piece, the Jolly Rogers most likely originated from the devil. I'll leave links in the description to where I expand on this. Anyways, the term Jolly Roger overall means a happy spearman since Jolly means happy and Roger means a boy spearman. Isn't this exactly what Nika was? On this page, we also see Oda say how the Jolly Rogers are a symbol of death just like how Luffy had to die to become Joy Boy or to awaken Nika. Another hint tying it back to Nika is that we see the dumb or the drums of liberation sound effect right over the Jolly Roger. Now you may be wondering, how does this all tie to Buggy? Well, let's take a look at the earliest depiction of the Nika silhouette drawn by Oda. You can clearly see that on this same page with all the Nika or Joy Boy references, it also has something that seems to be an early depiction of the Nika silhouette. Now, who does this early depiction of Nika look like? Yep, Buggy. I truly believe that this whole page at the end of chapter 2 will foreshadow that Buggy will in some way be Nika or have a connection to him by the end of the series. Another hint of Buggy becoming a false sun god is when the first time we see Buggy, he mistranslates something that one of his crew members says to him. One of his crew members tells him that only the robber knows about where the Grand Line map is. Buggy mistakes robber knows for being rubber nose. I don't find it a coincidence that in Buggy's introduction scene, he's described as having a rubber nose, even if it's just a joke. I think it's somewhat a parallel with him having some sort of connection with the rubber man or Nika. This brings me to my next point of how throughout the whole story Luffy and Buggy are somewhat two sides of the same coin. Luffy and Buggy are both the masterminds in the breakout of Impel Down. Luffy and Buggy both press Whitebeard. Luffy says he's gonna be the one to become the Pirate King and not Whitebeard while Buggy tells him that he's gonna kill him. After they do this they both end up on the side of the Whitebeard Pirates in the war. Both Luffy and Buggy are noticed by men to be talking to Whitebeard as an equal. Both Luffy and Buggy fight Mihawk and survive. Both Luffy and Buggy lead men throughout Marineford. Both Luffy and Buggy are allied with women that have a devil fruit that's connected with their beauty. Both Luffy and Buggy get reveals of who they truly are in the Marineford saga. Luffy gets the reveal that he's Ace's brother and Dragon's son, while Buggy gets the reveal that Shanks is like a brother to him and that he was a member of the Roger Pirates. Both Luffy and Buggy accidentally ate their devil fruits because of Shanks. Some other parallels would be that they both have had some mini forms and they both become friends with Gaimon who almost never sees anyone. I believe all these connections prove that they are two sides of the same coin which will lead to both of them being the Pirate King and Sun God Nika in some way. Luffy being the real Pirate King and Sun God Nika while Buggy being the false one. Buggy's ship even has a bunch of half suns around it showing that he will be Sun God Nika in a halfway form since he's the false god. Luffy on the other hand has a ship called the Sunny because he's the real Sun God. Another thing to point out about Buggy being the false Nika is that we always see Luffy saying how he doesn't want to be known as a hero throughout the whole world. He likes being a pirate and wants to be known as one, not as some heroic figure that liberates people. Even in the latest chapter of 1053, we see Luffy telling Momo to not tell anyone about him because he doesn't want to be a hero. This is just like Alabasta, Fishman Island, and other arcs as well. With knowing this about Luffy, this perfectly coincides with Buggy. Buggy is the complete opposite and wants to build up his reputation so he can 
can be feared among the world. With Luffy doing the dirty work, Buggy might end up taking a lot of the credit for it and might be misplaced as the sun god, especially by his very loyal crew. Buggy somehow always gets in the perfect situations at the perfect times to build up his legacy of being a legendary man. I think it'll just be so funny if even some of this goes down. The last parallel with Luffy and Buggy would be that they both became emperors at the exact same time. I know it's just a meme right now, but let's be honest, Oda isn't just gonna make Buggy an emperor for no apparent reason. Whatever Buggy did had to be absolutely insane. It had to be something on the same level as Luffy in my opinion because the world government didn't even make Law or Kid an emperor. I know people are saying that this trashes on the title of the Yonko, but in my opinion it doesn't because I truly believe Oda has something so crazy planned for us which no one will be expecting. Also, I know Buggy isn't considered very strong for a Yonko, but he is a guy that naturally brings people together to join him and follow his leadership. Even though he isn't the strongest, I think we're still underrating what he's capable of doing, which leads me to my next point, which is his strength. I think Buggy is a bit stronger than we all remember. In case you forgot, Buggy legit defeated Zoro in a one-on-one -on -one and could have even killed him if he hit his vital points. We even saw Buggy pick up the Orange Town Mayor with the chokehold as if he was Darth Vader or something. Buggy also lost to Luffy in the most BS way by getting sucker shot and even tickled. In a one-on-one, -on -one, it seemed like Buggy was actually the better fighter at the time. I mean, he even took Luffy's hat right out of his hand. In Logetown, Buggy once again was supposed to kill Luffy, but only didn't because of pure BS. I mean, it seemed like Dragon had something to do with the situation, which yet again, Buggy was not expecting. Another reason I think Buggy is actually decently strong is because he isn't really scared of anyone in One Piece. The only guy he's ever been shown to fear is Whitebeard, and that's honestly reasonable considering that he saw him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Roger as a kid. When Buggy meets Ace, he's not scared of him because of who he is, he's only a little worried because he knows the strength of Whitebeard. Buggy is also not scared of Luffy at all and even thinks that Luffy is much weaker than him. Another guy Buggy stands up to without a single bit of fear is Shanks, yet another Yonko that Buggy doesn't even flinch at. Buggy even asks Shanks to join his crew, laying out his dominance. Other guys that it seems he's not scared of could be Mihawk and Zoro, but those are just the obvious. With all this being said, Buggy is actually a lot better of a pirate than we remember. He just didn't want to be hunted by the world government. Buggy is a true treasure hunter which is why his bounty was ridiculously low and also why he never developed any great hockey techniques. He's not really a guy that likes to fight people, he's only really focused on finding all the treasures. In my opinion, Buggy becoming a Yonko in terms of strength may seem silly, but with his natural ability to get pirates together and lead them, I think he could definitely be a worthy emperor. Remember, Mihawk once said that Luffy has the most ridiculous ability in the seas, which is to turn those around him into his allies. Buggy shares this exact exact same ability and it's probably the main reason he became a Yonko. Another thing that could have helped Buggy become a Yonko is if he awakened his fruit. If Buggy awakened his devil fruit, which I can see happening since he seems to have mastered it, he can definitely become a more worthy opponent than we previously thought. I mean Shanks did say that his devil fruit could sell for 100 million berries which makes it seem like it's a decent fruit if used properly. I've even seen some people say that maybe Buggy will split the heavens just like the other Yonko, but instead of hockey it'll be with the fruit's abilities. I honestly really hope that happens because that panel would be legendary. All in all, whatever Oda has planned for us and for Buggy, I trust. He's not gonna make Buggy a Yonko without a Yonko level reason. I truly can't wait to see what Buggy did because it could be both hilarious and insane. That pretty much wraps up my whole theory and if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching and remember to have a great day.